We've all experienced difficulties working with dates across different platforms like SmartSuite. So SmartSuite does offer a lot of different types of date field types, such as the date field, date range, the due date field type. They've recently added a repeating task feature, and there's some workarounds that you can create with functions and formulas as well. So I'm going to go through each of those, but I'm going to really dive into a custom function that I had to recently build due to some difficulties myself. So if you've struggled with dates and date formats in the past, make sure you check this one out. Welcome to our channel. My name is Zach Stevenson. I'm a business processes and no code consultant. If you need help streamlining or automating any of your business processes, please visit our website below to book a free console. I have a smart suite solution and table open here. Uh, here's my list of things that I'm going to go through. So most of these are fairly simple. I'm going to spend a little bit more time on this last one here, which is a custom functionality that I had to recently develop because none of these other options worked quite the way I needed them to repeating task feature. I may have been able to make work, but it still wasn't quite right. So. I'm going to go through each date option here and then dive into the last one in a little more detail. Across most platforms, there's a date option. Almost everyone should be familiar with that. It's just general date. There's an option to go into defaults and select a default when you, a new record is created. So today's date would automatically get inserted in this cell or today plus a certain number of days and so on. Pretty straightforward. I'll add that. You get a date picker here and you can select the date and then across formulas and different functionalities, automations, you could use that date field, the date range, add a new field selected as date range. And I will add the field. What this is going to do is allow you to select a start date and an end date. And it will show you the time range here and the number of days that it covers. Again, pretty simple field. The due date field type gives us a little bit more flexibility. So I will add that, select due date. And what it's asking for here is a status field to be connected to it. I will have to add a status field type and go back into the settings of the due date field type. And it has picked up status being the linked status field. So what that's going to do is I will select the date. It will show me that I've got two days remaining till this item is due. And if I go over here into the status and select complete, within a second, it will show that it has been checked off and when it was actually completed. The other thing within the due date field type is this repeating task feature. So I'll select the date and down at the bottom of it, there's this repeating task icon. If I select it, it will open up a sub menu. I can just turn it on and off here and I've got different options. So how often or the frequency that it repeats. So whether it's daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, you can select days after completion or some other custom repeating frequency. So I'll leave it as weekly for now. And you can also select when it's supposed to repeat. If you want it to repeat every Tuesday, you can have that set up. If you need it repeating monthly, you can have the same day of the month or first Tuesday, first day of the month, last day of the month. There's lots of flexibility there. More so on the frequency end of things. Here's some of the further settings, depending on what you pick for frequency. Then there's a set status too. Once you've completed the record and a new record will get created for you, you can have the status set to whatever you want. And then there's just also uh, fields to copy option. If there's some data across some specific fields that you want to be added to each and every record that gets created. So let's say you want to do review your bank statement monthly or on the first of every month, and you have a checklist that you want copied over as well. And that's where you can use some of these. That's just a little bit into the repeating task feature. It's very helpful and very useful but it still did not quite hit what I was trying to accomplish. Basically what I needed to do is I had a list of equipment or vehicles and tools, and some of those tools or instruments needed a due date. And let's say it's on an annual date that it comes up. I could use the repeating task feature, but it's not quite what I needed or wanted with the way that my solution was set up. I needed to 
convert things a little bit differently. This would also be useful for birthdays, if you had other inspections or annual maintenance or any really time frequency reoccurrence for maintenance. You could use that, but I will dive into it a little bit here. I'll just open up this field. I have some notes on it. Depending on your specific need, the formula or the exact setup might differ slightly. And then some of the fields that I'm going to add in here could be combined. They don't necessarily have to be in their own field, but to keep things a little bit clear and for explaining things in more detail, I've separated out some of these fields that probably could be combined. The first couple options that we need is I'm going to add a single select for frequency, whether the inspection is every six months or annually or every two years, you can pick whatever frequency you need. Let's say you're setting up something for birthdays. Obviously in this case, you probably wouldn't need the frequency because you would just add into one of the formulas that this repeats every single year. But other things like inspections, if maintenance or inspections require different time frames or different frequencies, this is where you would want something like this to exist. I will create the first few fields here. So I'll just add a new field and I'll bring in a single select field type and I'll simply call this frequency and one year and two years. There's this icon right here that you can select. It opens things up and I'm actually going to include a value. So there's going to be a number value that gets assigned to each of these. And I'm going to label the first one as 12 and then assign a value of 24 to the second one. In my case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a months formula to be able to calculate how many months or how much time has passed for the next due date to occur. So you could use simply, you know, one and two for the number of years, but the way I'm setting things up, I'm going to be using months. So I'll save my choices, update the field, and we've got the frequency options. I'm going to create one more record. And I'm also going to delete these other two fields that we don't need for the purpose of this custom functionality. Let's say this tool has a frequency every one year that it needs to be inspected. We've got the frequency field set up. We need another single select for the month of its inspection. And again, if you select this icon here, we can actually go down to this predefined list and we can scroll down to months of the year and it will add every month of the year for us. And one thing it doesn't do is include the value. So I'm gonna select include value and I'm gonna go from January down to December and assign a value of one through 12. Once I've completed that, I'll save my choices and select add field. Now I have on every single year, this tool needs to be inspected and we'll select September of every year, the tool will be selected. And the next thing I want is to be able to add a day. This is going to be a number field and we'll just select this and call it day and we'll make it for September 5th of every single year. Now we have the frequency, the month and the day that this inspection needs to take place. Again, if this was for birthdays and this was a contact list here, you have the person's name, you wouldn't need the frequency column or field, but then you could select here simply when their birthday is. The next field I'm going to add is going to be a formula field type. What it is going to do is format the date into a string type. Add a new field. The formula field will go to the advanced editor. And then here's where we're going to have to create a formula that looks at the dates and creates a date string for us. I'm going to create a concat function. This is going to create the string. Then I'm going to do a numeric value function. And what that is going to do is pull that numeric value that we created on that date list for January through December one through 12, it's going to do extract the actual number or that value that we assigned within that list. We're going to create this string. It's going to be a month, a day and a year type date. What I need to do here is bring in the month that's now extracted the value from that. Now I can add a comma on the outside of that, add in a slash in quotes, because we're going to have month, day, and year. Now I can bring in the day, add a comma, a slash, 
within quotes, and we're going to bring in the year function of now. This formula looks like it should work. I will repeat what I just did. The concatenate is going to basically take all these values and add them into a string. So it's concatenating the numeric value of the month. In this case, we picked September. So it's going to be the number nine. And then we separated it with a slash Then the day. So it's September 5th the day is equal to five in this case. And then we have used the year function on the now function. What that's doing is extracting the year from the now function. And all now is, is getting today's date or what the time day and time is right now. I'll go up here. I'll just call this format date and I'll put it in string and brackets. Clarity, click add field. And we can see here that September 5th, so 9-5-2023. So this is in a string format. The next thing that we can actually add is go in here. We'll add another formula, advanced editor again, and I will call this current date. We're going to make it a little more clear. It'll be the current year date. So now I'll just take this. I will use a date function. I'm just going to pass that format date string into this date function. So now what it's doing is it is converting this string here, which is a date or which is a string field type into a date field type. So I'll select add. And you can see here now, because of the way that SmartSuite reads these types of dates, it has correctly assigned a date field type to it. And it shows that it's September 5th because of the way that is displaying, it's just showing September 5th without the year, the year is actually in the background because we are actually in this current year. If this displayed as 2024 or 2022 or any other year that isn't this current year, it would show September 5th, comma, and the year. I'm going to add another formula field type. Again, we'll go into the advanced editor and I'll just call this next date. What this would do is again, it's probably simplest if I explain it in birthdays. So if I've added September 5th, as the person's birth date, it's going to look at when the next birthday is. So because we're in December, September 5th has already passed. It's going to do a calculation and find that September 20 or September 5th, 2024 is the next date. But let's say for example, today's December 5th, if the person's birthday was December 20th, the next birth date would actually be December 20th, 2023. So we're going to create some logic here that creates that kind of calculation for us and it will display the correct date that we're looking for. I'm going to break this down into chunks. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to bring in this date diff function. So what it's going to do is going to take two different dates. We're going to give it a unit and whether that's minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, years, I'm going to use days for this case and it will give us the number of days between those two periods of time. So I'm going to use this date diff function. I'm going to first pass the now function. So basically I'm going to pass today's date into it. I'm going to put a comma in there. I'm going to pass in the date that we created last formula. So current year date, and then in quotes, I'm going to add days. I'll click add field and you will see here that this date here, the current year date was 91 days ago. And that's what the negative symbol is showing. If I go over here and select December and put in the 20th, we can see that the December 20th, the next date is actually 15 days from now. I'll flip it back to September 5th and we can double click this field and we can continue adding to the formula. We're going to go back to the start of the formula. We're going to add an if statement. And basically what we're going to do here is now, if this portion calculates a negative number, then we're going to know that we have to add a year to that date. Basically what we're doing is if the day has already passed, September 5th of this year has already passed, 
we know that we need to add a year. If this day is in the future, we know this day has not existed yet. We do not need to add a year. This right now is resulting in a negative number. So if this is less than zero, if we're going to then date add, going to add the current year date and this date add, I'll go into this function a little bit. So date add, we're going to take a date. We're going to take the count, a specific number, and we're going to add a unit as well. In our case, what we did is we want to add the frequency. This count is going to come from the frequency. Again, we're going to have to use that numeric value function. Basically what we're doing here is taking the current year date. So September 5th, 2023, and we're going to add 12 months to this date to get the 2024 date. So I'll go date add current year comma numeric value. We're going to bring in the frequency. And then on the outside of that, within quotes, we need to add months. Basically, if this is less than zero, we want to find the current year and add one year to it or 12 months in this case. And if that is not true, so if that's false, then we want to just show the current year date and then we can close out. I'll hit update field and we can see here that in date format, it's showing September 5th, 2024, because this date has already occurred in the past. I'll go down to December 20th and we can see here that this is December 20th of 2023 because this date has not occurred yet. To take it a step further, we could go into here and use a, another formula field. We'll go into the advanced editor and then we can add the date diff function. We're going to use now function again. We're going to add the next date and we're going to add the number of days. I'll click add and we can see here that we've got 14.29 days until the next date. In this case, we we're doing until the next inspection date, but again, that could simply be a birth date as well. You can see if I flip this back to September and we'll go fifth, we've got 274.29 days until the next date. That is basically it for this tutorial. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. I know this was a little bit more detailed and with all these different formulas and fields, they can get a little bit confusing. Again, if you do have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Otherwise, that's it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully it's helpful and not too confusing for you. And make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get more tutorials in the future.